Banky W allegedly cheat on wife, impregnates side chick. Where well, there have been rumors flying all around about a particular uh, artist, a singer, that has impregnated his side chick. Well, and there has been responses from the singer as well. And this rumor actually started when Gossip Blog, this lover, uh, took to its page to hint about a certain singer and politician who is light skinned impregnating a side chick. Well, this lover didn't come out clean or say the name of the person actually. So, a popular Nigerian singer, actor, politician, and preacher, Olu Bankole Wellington, professionally known as Banky W, has allegedly cheated on his actress wife, Adesua Etomi, but not only cheated, but also impregnated a side chick who was believed to be Niyola, who was formally signed to his record label. Well, Niyola, who is a female Nigerian recording artist, singer, songwriter, and performer, rose to fame after being signed to Banky W EME record in the year 2012. There have been multiple rumors in the past linking Niyola romantically with Banky W, but this subsides after his marriage to Adesua Etomi. Now, the side chick has reportedly terminated two pregnancies for the singer and refused to abort the third, which has left the man confused. Well, this shocking revelation comes just week after Adeshi Waetomi poured out her heart to Banky W on social media on his birthday. Now, the talented actress reflected on how she had broken down in tears two or three years ago when she realized that God has given her the best husband. Now, describing Banky W as her entire half, Adeshi Waetomi praised him for being a reflection of God's love for her. She spoke highly of his compassion, his kindness, sweetness, and you know, peaceful nature. Adeshi Waetomi also celebrated him for always prioritizing others before himself and being the best father to their son. However, the blog further alleged, that's this lover, that Banky W and the side chicks had been involved in affairs before his marriage to Addis Waetomi and continued it afterward. Now, the revelation has left many of his followers heartbroken with numerous prayers hoping that the allegations are false. But while Banky W was addressing his congregation at the Waterbrook Church in Lagos on Sunday, now the rapper turned preacher said the rumors were orchestrated by Satan by satanic elements who don't want his members to listen to his sermon on Sunday. Now, he declared that the devil is a liar while assuring his congregation that God was in control. Now, he said, the devil really didn't want you to hear this message. In fact, he didn't want us to enter into this series at all. There was an attack at the beginning, but here we are. But the devil is a liar and God is in control. Now, preaching on the topic, he further went ahead and said, the topic they were to consider is the prison of pornography. Now, Banky W appreciated his wife, Adesua, for supporting him during his struggle with porn addiction. He said, uh, if I don't thank God for anything in my life, I thank God for my wife. Watch. Powerful thing in this house. And, uh, you know, the devil really didn't want you to hear this message. In fact, he didn't want us to enter this series at all. There was an attack at the beginning. And here we are. But the devil is a liar and God is in control. And I really think that um, we weren't, you know, the devil really didn't want us to hear this. First of all, he doesn't want us to be free. The Bible says this, the thief comes not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And the only people that can never get free are people that don't realize they're in bondage in the first place. And that's what we've been dealing with all along. And so today we decided that the series finale is going to be on the prison of pornography. Amen. I got one amen. God bless you. Um, because it's a, it's a touchy subject. It's a sensitive issue. It's something that a lot of people are not comfortable talking about. I've been going to church for most of my life. I've never sat in a church and heard a pastor preach about or a teacher or anybody speak about pornography in the building i've never heard it i mean i've heard you know it's mentioned it's, it's touched on but it's never really dealt with and you know this is something that i struggled with and if you go to the waterbrook you've heard some of my life stories many times so it's not news to you guys but when i was in the midst of this bondage when i was struggling with it 
I actually had to go and look for messages and thank God for messages from people like Pastor Robert Morris, from Mike Todd, from Craig Groeschel, from Jimmy Evans, there are a few pastors that God just led me to who had dealt with this subject and it was the truth that I learned that set me free and that is the truth I'm going to share with you today. Are we together? And you know when you talk about pornography, you um, because it's such a, it's sometimes it's a thing that people feel very ashamed about. So I will not ask you to raise your hand if this is something you struggle with. Middle. So get, join something, join a community, find people that you can pray with, find people you can talk to. If I don't thank God for anything in my life, I thank God for this woman. Because it's important to have somebody that you can share with. Somebody pick the right person, no? That you can talk to and say this is my struggle can you pray with me can you hold me accountable in the middle of my battles with pornography when i would need to travel i would keep this woman on the phone <laughs> i would keep her on the phone for hours because i didn't want to break i'd be alone in the hotel room and i would be calling her just to talk with me Remember the story I, I read to you about David? We read it today when he almost got killed by a giant. David had killed giants before. But what happened? He was weak. He was tired. So these are the things you watch out for. I'm now getting into the last one. Resist. Watch for your triggers. When you're weak, when you're tired, when you're stressed out, what do you run to? What's the refuge? What, are you, what do you do in that moment? Who do you talk to? Who do you turn to? When you're weak, when you're tired, when you're exhausted, when you're stressed out, when you've gone through something. David had killed giants before. A giant was about to kill him again. The Bible says his, his man, Abishai, came to rescue him. So who is your Abishai? You think you can go through this life alone? Not depending on anybody? That's not the way we were designed. We were designed for community. We were designed for relationship. You need an Abishai. And even if you don't have one as of today, the Holy Spirit says he will be your Abishai. Because you always have him. Are you sharing me? So you regroup, you find community, you find somebody to connect with. And then you resist. Guys, this thing is so tricky, it's so subtle, it's so dangerous. That you need to set up barriers 